Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah, thank you guys for joining me this afternoon. Uh, hopefully uh, this will not be a waste of your time, bi-idhni lahi ta'ala. Um, it's Friday afternoon um, in some parts of America especially the East Coast, it's raining or about to rain. And so, alhamdulillah, for the last, you know, couple of hours on the day of Jumu'ah, we get to uh, benefit. Um, as I don't know if many of you are aware that the Prophet Wasallam said that on the day of Jumu'ah, on Friday, there's a short window of time that whoever is found making dua for anything during that time, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to them. And the scholars, they obviously differ as it relates to when that time is. One of the opinions of the scholars as it relates to when that time actually is, it is the last moments of Jumu'ah, the last moments of the day of Jumu'ah. So that means that it's like any time between Asr and Maghrib, any time between Salat al Asr and Maghrib. These are the last moments of Jumu'ah. So alhamdulillah, we are taking advantage of that opportunity. Uh, alhamdulillah, I had a window in my schedule. So like I like to do um, is share information uh, with you guys as a reminder for myself and reminder for those of you who are familiar with the story that we're going to cover today. Today, we're going to look at a very important hadith, um, a story that contains so much wisdom in it. Uh, and that is the story of Juraj. This particular hadith was collected in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurairah who said that the Prophet وسلم, said لم يتكلم في المهدي إلا ثلاثا لم يتكلم في المهدي إلا ثلاثا that none spoke in the cradle except three. There were three individuals that spoke in the cradle, meaning spoke at a time when they were infants, spoke in infancy, all right? And the, the beauty of this hadith is that the Prophet Sallallahu is sharing something with his ummah that happened in another ummah, that happened in a previous ummah, so that his ummah can, you know, his ummah can benefit from that. His ummah can benefit from that. All right. So very important for, as you can see, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, was an individual who was not stingy with his knowledge, meaning he gave us knowledge that was a part of our religion, meaning what was revealed in the Quran and what was inspired to him from his sunnah. But he also went a step further to give us information that was conveyed to him by Jibreel alayhi salam, from what happened in the previous nations. He didn't leave anything out from his ummah. And, and that shows you, you know, the benefit that we get from that is that the Prophet Sallallahu wasn't stingy with his knowledge. Unlike today, you have some people who say, well, I don't teach these people. Or I don't speak to these folks or I don't teach these people because they're not Salafi or they're not Sunni. So you're not going to teach them about Islam because they're not Salafi. I mean, like in what world? You're only going to teach people Islam who ascribe to your particular methodology or is the knowledge of Islam for everybody? How do we get to pick and choose who we're going to teach Islam to and who we're going to deprive? I mean, like, how do you answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah when Allah blessed you with knowledge at a time when you were ignorant? <laughs> right? There was a time as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Alam yajidika yateeman did we not find you astray and we gave you guidance? And that applies to all of us. Even though the Prophet Wasallam, uh, even though Allah is talking to the Prophet Wasallam, it applies to all of us. Was there not a time when we were all once astray? Whether you were born Muslim or you converted to Islam, was there not a time in your life when you did not have all of the answers? You did not know what you know what direction you were going and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you knowledge and now that you have knowledge you decide who you're going to give that knowledge to how do you answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Did not the Prophet ﷺ say that the child of Adam, his foot will not move one step on the day of judgment until he is asked about four matters? And one of those four matters is you will be asked about your in. You will be asked about your knowledge and what you did with it. What did you do with the knowledge that Allah gave you? You pick and chose, you cherry picked and hand picked who you was going to give knowledge to. I mean, this even applies to Muslims as it relates to teaching non-Muslims. It's like we only give we only give da'wah to people who are Muslims. We only talk to people who are Muslims. We only speak about Islam to people who are Muslims. So non-Muslims, we don't say anything to them about Islam. I mean, like we, we really need to take a look at that. But the Prophet ﷺ didn't deny his ummah anything. Even knowledge that wasn't mandatory for him to give to his ummah, he still, you know, imparted information uh, on us that was, you know, from previous nations that he felt that would be a benefit for us. Um, I don't know if you guys on Facebook, if you can hear and see, please let me know if you guys on Facebook, if you can hear and you can see. I'm not sure. Okay. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لم يتكلم في المهدي إلا ثلاثة That none spoke in infancy except three. None spoke in infancy except three. So one, the, the first lesson that we get from this is, um, you know, the duty of teaching people and, and giving information to people beyond what we feel is our duty. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't leave any stone unturned. The second thing that we get from this is the power, the Qudratullahi Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the power of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, in that he is fa'alul lima yurid, that he does what he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he does not, you know, he is not to be questioned about what he does. As Allah says in the Quran, la yus'alu amma yaf'alu wa hum yus'alun. That Allah is not to be asked about what he does, but you will be asked about what you do. We don't question God. We don't ask God why. We don't, you know, <laughs> there's things that Allah does, that God does that is above our ability to comprehend. And we don't question that. We just simply say that it is above me. <laughs> Literally, it's above me. But it shows you the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do as he pleases and that he can make subhanahu wa ta'ala anything speak. This is very important for us to understand. Because if the Prophet sallallahu said, لَمْ يَتَكَلَّمْ فِي الْمَهْدِ إِلَّا ثَلَاثٍ That none spoke in infancy except three. That means who gave them the power to speak in infancy? Where did that power come from? Who gave them the power to speak in infancy other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As Allah says in Surah Fusilat, Surah number 41, Ayah 21. Turn to this ayah. I want you guys to pay attention. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if God can make an infant speak in infancy, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to make anything speak. You, you guys see where I'm going with this. <laughs> If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if God has the power to make infants speak, babies speak in their infancy, then he has the power to make anything speak. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, this is Yom al Qiyamah, the day of judgment when the human being is going to be, is going to debate with himself. We are going to have conversations. Like you see how in today's time we have conversations with ourselves? Do you ever talk to yourself? <laughs> Don't say that you never talk to yourself or don't think that a person is crazy because they talk to themselves. Like you, we all have conversations with ourselves and that's actually healthy, believe it or not. It's actually very healthy to have conversations with yourself. Ali ibn Abi Talib was mentioned about him that he used to kind of yukhatib al-tariq, that Ali ibn Abi Talib, he used to speak to the pathway, he used to speak to the street, meaning as he walked, he would be talking to himself. And... This is a conversation we, we talk to ourselves in today's time. Our bodies talk to ourselves in today's time. When you haven't had enough water to drink, 
your mouth gets dry, you know, you're parched, you know, your body is telling you. When you haven't had enough sleep, you know, you're lethargic, you know, you start to feel tired. That's your body communicating to you, right? When you have a headache, you know, that means that your body is trying to communicate to you that something is wrong, right? This is your body communicating with you in this life. And if you don't respond to your body, then whatever damage you're doing is only going to enhance, is only going to increase, right? On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us in on a conversation that some people will have with their body parts because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow our body parts to testify either for us or against us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fusilat, Surah number 41, uh, 41, 21. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ الْجِلْدِ Which is your skin. Right? So Allah says, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ And they will say to their body parts, to their, 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 their faculties, لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا Why are you testifying against us? This is the human being having a discussion with his body parts, having a discussion with his faculties. Why are you testifying against us? Because we think that there's some type of loyalty that our bodies have to us because they're, they're, it's, it's ours. But what we don't understand is that the body that your soul is in right now, that body is just a vessel. It is, it is the tool, it is the vehicle by which your soul can have this human experience. But the body is not yours. The body belongs to God. The body is not yours for you to do with it whatever you please. Which is why, for all of you out there, I'm sorry to say, for those of you who are in the habit of getting tattoos, you love going getting tats on your neck and on your arms and on your bodies, and don't sit here and say that you did that before you converted to Islam. Now, you did that while you were Muslim. Some of you still getting tattoos on your body. Some of you still, you know, removing things and adding things to your body under the guise of, you know, what's, what's acceptable in society today. But what you don't realize is the body that you are destroying, the body that you are desecrating, is not yours. It is the vehicle that Allah gave you by which your soul can navigate this world, can move around through this world until its time is up. The soul was somewhere else. Your, your mom got pregnant, right? The seed was put into your mother. That is the frame. That is the physical frame. So your mother is Essentially, when she was pregnant with you, was nurturing the physical frame. When that physical frame reached 120 days, the, the beginning of the second trimester, the, the very beginning of the, first, the second trimester, right? As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, 120 days, four months. When that fetus, that shell, reached 120 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something magnificent happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel down to blow the spirit, the soul, into that physical body. And thus, the physical, the fetus now becomes a human being. You guys follow me? Thus, the, the fetus becomes a human being. A vessel, <laughs> fully loaded. A vessel, fully loaded. The soul is now there. And once that physical body exits the womb of the mother into the world, the physical body grows and it's able to have this human experience. But the soul that is inside the body is what will be accountable. And so it is not for you to do to your body what you please. Damaging our body with drugs and alcohol and unhealthy eating, damaging our body by, you know, <laughs> You know, illegal, illicit sexual relations. You know, think about all of the ways that people have damaged their bodies. Right? It's a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ And then on that day, 
the day of judgment, you will be asked about every na'im, every ni'mah. You will be asked about every blessing that Allah gave you. Every blessing that Allah, every blessing that God gave you, you are responsible for. So for those of you who are in the habit of getting your body tattooed and you think that this is okay, the Prophet Wasallam cursed, cursed. He invoked the curse of Allah on the person who gets the tattoo and the one who does the tattooing. The one who does it and the one who gets it. Because that body is a trust that body is only there as a vehicle to help your soul move around through the earth. That body is not yours. And that body, that same body, will testify against you on the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala captures that conversation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they say, And they will say to their bodies, Why is it that you are testifying against us? And the body parts will respond back to the human being. And the body parts will turn back to the human being and say, Allah. Allah is the one who gave us the ability to talk. <laughs> He said that Allah is the one, God is the one who gave us the ability to talk. Meaning, our speaking out or testifying against you is by way of what God gave us, the power that God gave us. We're not doing this on our own. <laughs> so when the Prophet ﷺ said, none spoke in infancy except three, that points us back to the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who gave them the ability to talk? Who gave them the power to speak in infancy? None other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the qudra, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give anything the ability to speak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is a shaheedun alaykum, that Allah is a witness. Allah is the greatest witness. Allah doesn't need witnesses, but the witnesses are proof against us because the human being always wants to defend himself, defend herself. It wasn't me. It was shaitan's fault. It was this person's fault. If this one didn't lead me astray, if that one didn't do this, if that one didn't do that, we got every excuse in the world, which is why on a day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawma nakhtimu ala afwahim, on the day when we will seal their mouths shut. There will be no more defending yourself. Always looking for a way out. Can never accept responsibility for what we do. On the day when we will seal their mouths shut. And their hands will speak to us. And their feet will testify against them based because of what they used to do. You understand? Allah says he will seal your mouths shut. There will be no more defending yourself. But the point that I'm making is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give anything the ability to talk on the day of judgment. Even animals, the trees, these are all witnesses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when people commit crimes, people do things in night, at nighttime, under the shade of the night, and they think that nobody sees them, they can get away with it, nobody you know, can see them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, can see you. Allah is a shaheed, he's the witness. And number two, Allah has witnesses on earth, the animals, the squirrel, you know, that you didn't think was looking at you, the squirrel's eyes is a testimony against you. The dog, the stray dog, the cat, the squirrel, the insects who can hear you. Like these are all Allah's witnesses. You think that nobody saw me, so I got away with it. <laughs> You think that because nobody saw you, you got away with it. 
You wronged this person, you hurt this person, you killed this person, you did this to this person, and nobody saw it. Nobody's going to speak out against it because you the big bad wolf and everybody's afraid of you. Yomo Kiyama, everything that Saul will testify against you. You command that type of fear in this life, not in the hereafter. I'm sorry. So the Prophet Wasallam said, Lem yatakallam fil mahdi. That none spoke in the cradle except three. 